Hi guys, how are you? I hope you guys are all doing well. So I am back after what seems like forever. I am so excited to film this video for you guys because this video is going to be my birthing story. Now I have so much to update you guys on and everyone's birthing experience is so different. So you know if you're pregnant and they say and your midwife says let's do a birthing plan it goes out the window it's li it literally goes out the window and i'm going to be telling you guys my experience and what happened to me so with my birthing story it's not what i expected at all and you know what i'm still kind of getting over the trauma that i went through to get a baby girl here but alhamdulillah she's here and um, she is healthy and fine and alhamdulillah i am on the way to recovery so every single day is like a step forward alhamdulillah i'm like she's sitting up filming and um, now if you spoke to me like 10 days ago i would be like you're absolutely mental there's no chance i'm going to be sitting up filming that's how dramatic it was but anyways without me rambling any longer let's get right in and talk about my birthing story where do i even start you guys i have become an emotional wreck <laughs> no word of a lie like i literally cry over anything and everything so if i do cry in this video please ignore me but i'm just like i don't know what's happened to me <laughs> from someone who finds it really hard to cry to someone who cries over the little little thing like the tiniest little thing i will cry over some say it's baby blues some say it's just being overprotective of my daughter it's a combination of everything mixed together let me just tell you that now i went on instagram and i asked you guys to send in a bunch of questions so i've got all of you lots of screenshots on my phone and i'm just gonna go right through and answer your questions what is something no one told you happened during birth now everyone i feel like when you do like your antenatal classes or when anyone talks about birth they think birth is like so kind of like you wait for contractions or your water breaks and then you're going to go into labor and bob's your uncle that's basically labor but it's completely different for every single situation i had an emergency c-section so there you go i've said it out loud it was a very traumatic time for me and um, it was not what i expected it was not on my birthing plan um but you know what we plan and allah is the best planner so he kind of knew this was the right decision for me and you know what looking back it was the right decision alhamdulillah in so many different ways i'm gonna run through that in a minute but for now yeah next one is what pain relief did you have um in terms of pain relief a lot of drugs a lot of drugs um i don't know if you can see with my hands my hands are like a lot better now but if i could show you oh, I, I might put a picture up actually on here and show you guys what my hand looked like my hand was like double the size it was so swollen because the person who did you can still see the scar like here the person who did my cannula um did it in such a bad way that i still have bruises on here like it's kind of i don't know if you can see it a little bit because it's been like two weeks but it's like orangey yellow um it still really really hurts when i touch it but basically the person who did my cannula did it really wrong and every time i did put the drip in it would burn it feel like someone who's literally putting acid in my arm it was so painful um but in terms of pain relief a lot of drugs like a lot of like what i mean by drugs is like obviously paracetamol and um, codeine just like a lot of that kind of drugs and then a lot of like drips i had like 25 drips put in um through the cannula um i was so drugged up in the hospital it was unreal and yeah we'll get to that in a minute again <laughs> did you have a vaginal birth or a c-section a c-section um was the pain more painful than a period i didn't get any contractions as such it's basically you rush into a theater you're sat down they give you epidural and then bob's your uncle like you're in the operation like they're gonna cut you open and so you don't really get any contractions you don't really get any like your water doesn't break or anything like that and um, i mean it's, it differs for everyone but from my experience my water didn't break I get any contraction it was just kind of like as soon as i got to the hospital it was like rushed into the operation room so that's kind of how it was for me um a lot of people are asking the same kind of questions when did your water break how did you prepare okay another good question is um how did i prepare for my delivery but yeah because i had an emergency c-section there wasn't really much i could plan 
month as such as you can imagine but a lot of things that led me to my birth was um i was walking 30 to 45 minutes a day every single day i'd have like three to four um dates a day like, also i was i was really active during the day like, i didn't really take any kind of maternity time off as such which i know a lot of people do and they say you should because you should kind of let your body relax and maybe that's kind of what led me into having my baby early and maybe that was the reason i don't know but um they say you should kind of just take it easy like the last couple of weeks and just like let your body just relax i did not do that i am a very kind of go 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 person and that's just in my character and i can't i find it really hard to switch off so this whole time just me being at home with the baby with adult taking everything so slow just have have really affected me mentally because i'm a very like as soon as i wake up kind of girl get up get ready like get myself sorted for the day and like bob's your uncle but now my mornings are so much slower it's like really strange for me because i'm just used to just getting up and doing things and um even though i'm really busy throughout the whole day let me get like let me tell you that i'm like even though my days are so slow i feel like my days go by so quick which doesn't make sense but it kind of does in my head okay another question is are your in-laws supportive with the newborn uh, with your newborn of course they are they've come down they've seen her all adults brothers have come down and they've um, showed their love and respect and everyone absolutely loves her like she's mashallah she's so so cute next question actually because a lot of people ask that um did you give birth on your due date or were you early i was actually um one week and i was actually wait one second i was one week and one day early so she was actually born 38 weeks six days and that's when she was born um so yes i was early obviously emergency is actually you can't really plan for that unfortunately but yeah um what did you name your daughter so i actually today announced that her name on instagram and her name is amelia and i'm going to introduce you guys to her in a minute okay what products do you recommend for pre-birth oh my god you guys alhamdulillah mashallah i have not got a single stretch mark on my belly whatsoever throughout my whole pregnancy alhamdulillah mashallah and i'll give you a tip if you are pregnant i don't know if this is going to work for everyone but it did work for me um every single day after my morning shower i would use a i think it was like what was it called i don't even know the name of it it was just basically an oil for stretch marks for mums to be so i used to use that every single um day after my shower and then i'd go in with oh my god i don't know the brands or the names that's so bad and then i would go in and i'd use like a um i think it's called mia or something like that it was basically a cream for your stomach to prevent stretch marks now i would put those two products on every single day sometimes morning sometimes night sometimes twice a day i would religious religiously put it on and you know what it really really helped so if you're thinking about it and if you're like omen and rn just use it because it does really help i don't know if it's going to work for every single person out there but it did help me and i would 100 percent recommend it so i feel like i've answered a lot of questions um but i'm going to tell you guys about my birthing experience and what happened to me so on the 13th of february um bear in mind baby girl was born on the 15th of february by the way um on the 13th of february i remember waking up and i just felt so like ill like really really ill um every time i'd get up i'd feel like i was gonna faint i had no appetite i felt like i didn't eat or drink for two days solid i was literally bed bound i just felt so weak and just had no energy whatsoever it wasn't like a flu it was more like a temperature it was more like every time i'd get up i'd feel like i was gonna faint it was more like no appetite body aches just all of that I feel like i'd even drink any hardly any water like it just had no energy whatsoever i remember like i would be texting me at work and i remember i had no energy to text him back like i physically could not get my phone up get my phone in my hand and to text him back it was such a scary scary time so yeah that's basically what happened on the 13th and the 14th now on the 13th obviously because i was like so heavily pregnant i could feel like baby girls movements and stuff like that but on the 14th was it the 14th no it, sorry on the 15th um of february um i remember i could not feel any movements at all from her and i was getting really really concerned me and i were really concerned 
and even though I was feeling so dreadful and so horrible he Adam dragged me out of bed and he's like we're gonna go to the hospital right now um and we need to check this out because if you can't feed any movements from baby girl that's really really concerning and obviously it was concerning but because we you know when you're feeling so crap when you're feeling so ill the last thing you want to do is get up and actually make your way to the hospital because you're feeling so ill um but he was like no we're gonna go i don't care like he literally forced me and i'm so glad that he did because if he didn't God forbid anything could have happened. So what we did is he dragged me in the car and we went to the hospital. I was actually like wheeled in with a uh, wheelchair because I was like so weak to actually walk. Like I physically could not get up without me feeling like I was gonna faint. So he wheeled me into the hospital and then um, I got checked in and I went straight to a private room and I told them exactly what happened and like how far I was pregnant and stuff like that. And they put a drip in me straight away because I was so dehydrated. Because literally, I, like in the last two days, I probably drank like a sip of water. Because I was so dehydrated, they put me in a drip. And after that drip, like automatically, I felt so okay. Like it was so bizarre, but I felt like actually like good. I felt decent. And then they obviously checked, they put their monitors on my stomach and they checked and they gave me this little buzzer and they said, every time you feel the baby's contraction, press it. And I was like, okay, so I was just like literally waiting and waiting. Like I was like on the on the machines for like literally half an hour and I think I pressed it once or twice. So um, they were really, really concerned. And then my blood pressure went so high up. And again, like even though I felt okay, cause I had that drip and I felt actually like, okay. Um, I thought like, okay, like they're gonna just probably like release me. I'm gonna be going back home, I'll be fine. Like, and I was like just sitting there like just talking to a nurse. There was like five doctors that just literally ran into the room while I was laying there like with a drip on my hand. They ran in and one person had like a consent form. One person was taking my top off. One person was like putting my um, compression socks on. And I was just like, like this is literally how I was. I was like, what what the hell is going on right now? And they're like, we're so sorry, but we're gonna have to ru like rush you into an emergency C-section right now. Like literally right at this minute. And then I started crying so much because I don't want to talk about it because <laughs> it's such an emotional time for me. It was such a, such a hard time for me because imagine like you've been ill, like really ill for the last two days. You don't know exactly what's going on. And then you see all of these doctors rushing in like, and you're thinking, oh my God, what the hell's happening? Am I okay? The baby's okay? Like what the hell is happening? And they were like, so, I'm so sorry, but we're gonna have to run, rush you into the emergency C-section literally right now, right at this moment. So one person grabbed my hand and was like, you need to sign this. And another person was trying to like take my top off and put like the the robe thingy, top, whatever that robe thing is on uh, on me. And I was like crying and crying and crying my eyes out because I was like, I don't wanna do this because I've really set my mind and I was like, I'm gonna do this, like, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna give birth to my daughter um, and I'm gonna do this, like, I'm gonna be fine. But apparently like, my blood pressure was so high and they couldn't feel like baby heart's rate and they were like you know we need to do this like right at this moment like we can't delay it an hour or two like it has to be right at this moment and i was just so in shock because bear in mind guys i had nothing on me like literally just came in with like a jumper and my leggings and my hospital like my bags and everything was like in the car like like luckily my hospital bag was in the car but I was like not mentally prepared for this. I didn't think that I was going to go in for an emergency section. I just thought I was going to go for a little checkup, see what's wrong with me, and then I'll literally go back home the next, the same day. But I was, yeah, so I had to like just sign this form, and then the person took my top off and put this gown on, and I was crying and crying and crying. And I just, I said, I don't want to do this. Like, I, I have such bad. I have such bad trauma when it comes to hospitals because of everything that I went through in the past. Again, I don't want to get emotional, but I have such, such bad trauma, like really, really bad trauma. I promised myself I wouldn't get emotional and I'm gonna try not to, but I have really, really bad trauma when it comes to hospitals because if you guys didn't know, I had a lot of operations when I was younger and um, whenever I think about hospitals or whenever I go into hospitals, I have such bad trauma, like I still have, like, it's a horrible time. Anything with operations, I, I can't, like, I can't hack it. Assalamu alaikum. Here. Assalamu alaikum. Really Let's missing see. mommy. Huh? Yo, in the camera, look how no be. Look at that. <laughs> Go chicken back, face. Babe. Chicken face. So, yeah, this is Amelia, you guys. This is my baby girl. 
such a good good girl um okay i don't know where i was with the video because i got distracted um by little one with her nappy because obviously you know mom life now and you change her nappy every two minutes so basically like i was saying i have a lot of trauma when it comes to hospitals like a lot of trauma that hasn't left me yet and um so yeah um when i go into hospitals i find it terrifying and when i knew that i had to go for an operation um i was literally in bits because um like i said i'm still not over the trauma um nevertheless anyways um they were like basically rushing me through to the emergency room an adult couldn't come in with me um at that time because i had to they had to do the epidural for me and i had to be by myself so anyways and all i could just remember when they were like um rushing me through was these big lights and that that was a horrible sight because that just reminded me of everything that i went through as a child in hospital like get rushing through to the emergency room um, and then just seeing those big lights seeing all these like equipment right next to me um that's when i started really shaking and i started getting really really scared and they knew that something wasn't up with me um and then they had to sit me up and then they did an epidural on my back and um by the way this process was like very fast pace like i haven't had a minute i didn't have a minute to really think about what was really going on and process and what was going on it was very very fast paced because they were really scared about my blood pressure going really high up and baby wasn't like they couldn't feel baby or nothing like that so it was very like go 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 so um they did my epidural and i had to sit there really really still they did it and then they laid me back down and then um I was like just literally crying. I was like, oh, can you please get my husband in? Please get my husband in. Please get my husband in. And then finally he came in and he was like with me. And then they put they put the curtains right like in front of me, so I couldn't see what was going on. And then before you know it, like literally, I'm not even joking to you, like five minutes. And then they were like, then I could just hear the baby crying. And they're like, your baby's born. Like here she is. And I'm not even joking, to you guys. That was literally five minutes. So like the whole process of me having the baby was like the quickest thing i think i've ever like went through it was so quick i didn't feel no tugging and no pulling nothing like that alhamdulillah it was so smooth and i was like really quite surprised with my experience i was like wow this is like so quick the longest bit was probably like stitching me up and i couldn't feel anything anyways because i was so distracted with the baby being on me and adol was there we were taking pit in the pictures and it was just such a surreal moment because i was like oh my god this is finally like this is that's it like that's it like i'm done like alhamdulillah and I, I couldn't feel any pain or anything like that and it was just such a beautiful experience um and then they sent him out again because i was done and they were like gonna just like move me to the next room and he was just waiting in the new room for me so yeah as soon as i got there i was just like in so in love with my child i was so happy and everything went so smoothly but they were just drugging me up so much that i didn't feel anything so it was just like such a like looking back i was like oh my god like my experience was so amazing like i would recommend a c-section to every single person if they could like go for it um but then but then um it got worse because um because of my infection i had earlier everything went downhill for me like after my operation i had such high fever i couldn't obviously if you've ever had an emergency seat if you've had a c-section you'll know the pain it was just so unbearable to even get up like sit up like out of the bed it was just so unbearable i remember like i was so desperate for a week after they take the cannula out by the way if you had a epidural you have to have cannula put in you um and then once the epidural is like worn off they did carry it out and then you have to go for a wee um and i remember the first time i had to get up there was a midwife and there was like adult holding me and i was crying the pain the pain you guys was something that i've never experienced before it was unbearable like the stitching and the scar was just so painful no matter how much drugs i was actually on it was just unbelievable and then um so yeah long story short because i had an infection um prior to me going into the hospital i had to stay in the hospital for four days and my mental health was so bad i don't think i've ever cried that much in my life it was a really really traumatic time for me uh, i'm not gonna sit here and sugarcoat it like i was so depressed and I found it really hard to look after my child because I couldn't even bend down. I couldn't even get up to go to the toilet. It was such an agony. So like, I remember like, um, by the way, adult could not stay overnight with me. I don't know if I've mentioned this because I don't know if this is, if, it, if it's still because of COVID, but he could not stay in the, um, in the hospital with me. So 
it, the, the birth and partner would be allowed from like 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. and then 9 p.m. he had to go home. So imagine like nine out like 12 hours me trying to look after my child i couldn't even look after myself it was such a difficult time it affected me so bad mentally like i remember just sitting there crying my eyes out thinking i want to look after my child i want to be able to like give my my child everything but i can't and to answer someone else's question it's did you bottle feed or breastfeed i had no choice but to bottle feed because i was not expressing um because i had nothing going for me in terms of i wasn't leaking i just had nothing because i was so weak and so ill after after the operation that i physically could not could not breastfeed my child because i had a really bad infection and obviously my child was hungry so they had to give them um give up obviously I had to like ball feed and like till now without me get without me best not crying again i still have this guilt in me like what if i did like try and breastfeed like what if and what if and the mum guilt is so so bad you guys I, I didn't think that was a thing but it's really really it is a real thing like you're always doubting yourself all the time and you're like but if i did this this could have happened if i did that that could have happened but you know what it was all in allah's hands and there was nothing i could personally do about it if allah wanted it to happen that way he made it that way and that's about it and i couldn't do anything about it so um i am bottle, bottle feeding by the way if anyone's wondering the midwife did recommend to just bottle feed so yeah i'm bottle feeding and you know what she's doing absolutely fine she's really healthy alhamdulillah she's growing i can't believe she's like two weeks already which kind of blows my mind um but she's just really healthy she's really strong mashallah and you know she's doing amazing so as much as i do have down days where i do like doubt myself and i do like sit there and cry and really think about my decisions i have to stop for a minute and think i was literally not capable of even getting out of bed let alone like picking up my child and i remember like i like when adult had to go home it would be like me ringing uh, the midwife just to, for her to come to room to just pass my baby to me like that's how bad it was i physically could not get up and every time i needed the wee i would literally hold it in until adult would come like 9 a.m in the morning to help me to get me up to go to the toilet like that's how severe severe a c-section is like it's the most painful thing you'll ever ever experience and um, some people just get up and they're just they're just fine the next day i physically couldn't because i was ill um i was really severely ill for four days after so i could they couldn't release me let me go home they were like no you have to stay in you have to take this 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 and yeah it was a really really dark time for me you guys i'm not gonna sh sugarcoat it and say it was like it was fine it was a really traumatic time for me and there's days where i just sit and think about it and then i start crying and i'm like wow i can't believe i went through that but alhamdulillah like i'm over it i'm fine i'm back to my normal self and that's all that matters i'm doing so much more better mentally like i am kind of getting to somewhat of a routine which is very difficult obviously having a newborn and they wake up every two three hours it's a little bit difficult but bear with me you guys i'm trying to get back into a routine um but i am so so happy to finally be sitting here right in front of you guys as a mom and it's crazy because i was like the least maternal person you'll ever meet i was like i do not want a child anytime soon and i have been like that since day one of me getting married i just didn't want a kid at all but alhamdulillah you know what we plan and allah is greatest planner he has put like this in the most perfect time ever i can't even like describe how perfect the timing is for us alhamdulillah like it's just it just feels right in my heart like i feel i feel like a mom you know it's kind of it's a kind of, kind of a bit scary but um i actually feel like a mom and i am a mom alhamdulillah and it's the most beautiful feeling ever and i hope everyone i i, I pray that everyone gets to have that feeling because it's beautiful and it's such a blessing you know but you know what when it's the right time it'll happen and there's nothing we can do about it and allah is the best put your trust in him and he will do the rest for you i promise but yeah you guys that is my birthing story please don't let my experience put you off or scare you in any way or form that's just my experience and what happened to me a lot of people 
go through an emergency c-section and they're absolutely fine they're on their feet the next day unfortunately it's not the case for me i'm still recovering um it's only been two weeks for me and they say with a c-section it takes up to like four to six weeks to fully get back to your normal self so um as much as i'm sitting up and i'm like filming i still have a lot of pain um and my scar is still well and truly there so like bending i'm unable to bend i'm unable to hoover i'm unable to do a lot of things around the house but i'm giving my time i'm giving my body time to recover and i'm not going to rush into things because the last thing i want is anything bad happening so i'm just kind of taking it easy and just going with the flow and doing things that i can do and inshallah like pray for me and inshallah we we get through this but yeah you guys that is my experience again please 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 don't let my experience put you off in any way or form because everyone's experience is different but this is just what happened to me and i thought i would share it with you guys um but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you guys did don't forget to give me a massive thumbs up and i shall see you guys in my next video inshallah once i'm fully recovered and once i kind of get back into somewhat of a routine shall we say but um thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys soon